Hey, it's Mara from Matter Hackers, and this is your Matter Hackers Minute. Pew, pew. So excited we are here at Matter Hackers headquarters in Southern California with Chris Tomlinson from Ghostbusters Station 6 on YouTube. Excellent. Welcome to, to Matter here. Hackers. Oh yeah, this welcome. is awesome to see you behind the scenes. Yeah, well I should say welcome back because you're here quite a bit. I am, absolutely. <laughs> Only um, in the front row. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, tell me a little bit about um, how this project got started because it uses a lot of 3D printing. Oh yeah, uh, so I, I love Ghostbusters. Have since I was three when you get the little Kenner proton pack. We are Proton Pack and Ghost Popper Gun, each sold separately. The real Ghostbusters. And I've always, always wanted a Proton Pack, but uh, my profession and what I get to do every day is I'm a filmmaker. So at some point, I've just stacked up a bunch of favors from a bunch of people in the film industry. And so I made one day, made the call of like, hey, I want to do a Ghostbusters movie first, and then it turned into a series just because internet is moving towards that direction for Netflix, Hulu, that type of stuff. So then the quest began of how do I get a proton pack? And I mean, you can go find them for $3,000, $5,000 and have a commission bill done, and they look great. But this back here costs about $400, and that includes all of the electronics inside that makes all the lighting. So 3D printing just became completely essential for me in my quest to make this series. That's awesome. Yeah. So this is the proton pack from the first series. Yeah, uh, the, for Ghostbusters 1 and 2, and mm -hmm. technically, if you want to get technical, um, it looks more like a Ghostbusters 2 proton pack and a little bit of the video game elements that will be coming in further series. 3D printing goes as well. Awesome. Yeah. And then you've got some other props here. Yeah, so I mean, typical ghost trap. This is almost 100% uh, 3D. Actually, no, this is 100% 3D printed except for the screws um, made by Count Spatula. Um, you can go get those on Thingiverse. All of this is available for free on Thingiverse. Um, but it, it's just like holding this in your hand. Some of the most iconic sci-fi props of all time. And you make it yourself. That is just so cool. Now, do you have a history in prop making or anything? Not at all. Oh, I wow. can't even build car uh, models. I've never even been able to successfully build my DeLorean, the one that you go by with a bunch of pieces. Mm -hmm. Couldn't build it. Now this though, uh, it just became essential for me to learn all this. You guys were a huge help in getting me started because I started from scratch. I had never touched props before. I'm always on the writing and directing side of filmmaking. So venturing into this was actually a lot easier than I thought. And we'll get it now. It looks pretty darn good yeah. if I do say so myself. So of course our viewers are going to want to know details about your print. What kind of printer are you using? What kind of materials are you using? And then uh, maybe talk about some of the post-processing after that. Okay. So let's start with the printers and materials. Sure. So I had I needed a specific build size or a uh, build plate size because some of these pieces are huge. So this is called the ion arm. The base of it back here, just the, the base of the ion arm is about that big, so I needed a Flashforge Creator Pro. And mind you, this was three and a half years ago, so I was looking for, all right, what's what's the best quality for the lowest price that I, in my very small budget, that had? Um, so I, I went with Flashforge Creator Pro, but I got my eyes on the See Me CNC that's over in your showroom, yeah. uh, just simply because like some of these parts right here uh, for the Proton Gun, this uh, is just PVC, so uh, because it's gotta be tall and the Flashboard Creator Pro couldn't go as tall, so I had just went down to Home Depot, bought PVC. But the CME CNC, I can actually print this, and probably yeah. even cheaper for it uh, than actual PVC pipe. The other part that was kind of big is this sink generator parts. The, they just are huge. And also the gearbox up here, 
Um, those are the technical terms on the actual uh, prop plans. It's crazy how detailed the Ghostbusters uh, fan universe gets. And this is really, truly based off of the actual Sony measurements. Like somebody went back 20 years ago and measured out all of this. So this is not only screen accurate, it's probably even more screen accurate than the actual ones that are in the movie. Mm -hmm. So it's very cool. It looks amazing. I mean, like close up, it looks amazing, but when it's, I'm sure, you know, under the lights and everything, when you're shooting, oh, yeah. it, it looks absolutely authentic. Um, let's talk about some of the materials. Sure. So I, I started off uh, just using standard. This is just standard uh, filament build. Okay. So it's Matter Hacker Standard, which has recently be, been rebranded to MH uh, Build. MH yeah. Build. But uh, now with the upgrades I'm going to be doing, I'm doing Pro Series filament. Okay. Yes. So yeah, but it did everything I needed it to do. Uh, I mean, with all 3D printing, stuff goes wrong, but luckily I had a lot of resources here that you guys helped me out with, but uh, for all intents and purposes, I built four proton packs in six months um, of just, if one was printing, I'm building one over in my garage while I'm doing that. And plus, the only alternative way to do this is actually throwing a like mold and getting sure. pl plastic out of it, and that's so time consuming and detail oriented and I'm not. So I had all of these guys who are on Thingiverse, all of these plans are available again on Thingiverse um, from very good designers. So they took the time from me and I was able to do other things. Yeah. And 3D printing technology has changed so much in the three years since you got your oh, yeah. first 3D printer. Oh yeah. So as you're moving forward, once you get yourself your CME CNC or, uh, or any other printers. Need approval. Yeah. <laughs> it'll, uh, it'll be even easier and faster and probably cheaper to produce um, props like this. Absolutely. And I mean, the, that price point that I had said earlier, this is with me making all of the mistakes. So mm. all of the, I, I think it was maybe five rolls of filament of the stand, or uh, MH build filament. And that's all of this here. So five rolls, uh, whatever the price point is right now, that's not bad. Yeah. Especially with how good it looks. Yeah. yeah. And then tell me about some of the oh, post-processing yeah. on uh, this and some of these other pieces. So I mean, you go online right now and you'll see one of these. This is a lifeguard too. And these obscure, these are real, actual items in the real world, and they just happen to the prop department on Ghostbusters. Like, hey, or this is Ghostbusters 2, this is Ghostbusters 1. I'm sure you've seen Bankman go, come in, Ray. Come in, Ray. <laughs> this is that radio. This is $60. This is probably upwards of $150 uh, if you go on eBay. But printing them, I don't know, maybe. 10 cents and then this was this was a lot more because it's all the way through uh, but yeah it was just great because these are some very rare props and supply and demand brings the price up and I don't have that for my budget so yeah, yeah. just able to do that and get screen accurate stuff. It's awesome and then tell me a little bit about the painting and the kind of post process. Oh, oh yeah yeah so this is uh, this is spray paint so I mean trade secret here the the black is just sharpie so I just took a sharpie and kind of kept it level so I wouldn't get ah, there's one little mistake right there but you don't <laughs> you probably can't see it uh, but yeah, the, the little striations that come from uh, just 3D printing, the, a couple layers of spray paint covers it all up and it looks almost exactly like this would in, if you were buying it from eBay. So the last time uh, we actually saw you was at WonderCon here in oh, Anaheim. Yeah. And um, you were telling me a story of something that happened there uh, that impacted your uh, your 3D prints. Oh uh, well, the, the the bummer one where somebody knocked uh -huh. it off. Oh gosh, Let's okay. Hear about the bummer story. Uh, so, be a bummer. I mean, on the floor of cons, there's hundreds, maybe even thousands of people. So at, at some point, my buddy was wearing one of these, walking around, and the the cord in between the proton gun and the proton pack, somebody just accidentally got their arm caught in between it and pulled ripped this right off the the proton pack and then they just bolted i don't know if it was an accident whatever it was but i was talking with some of the fellow ghostbuster cosplayers because this is huge like there are people who have spent three and five thousand dollars on their fully screen accurate screen sourced this little part right here is 45 dollars. i paid four cents for it but uh they they went and found all of those and that happens to them all the time. People walk up, so one, one person even told me they just straight up took the gun off, threw it down, broke it, ran off. And oh so gosh. like stuff happens. 
um, and even on set, this broke almost instantly. And so it, it, it happens, but it happens to all proton packs. But guess what I get to do in 3D, print, 3D printing? I have these parts already made, and it was just an easy drill it back in, glue it, and I'm done. Those guys had to go find this again and had to go find the tubing or find the actual screen accurate stuff. So I'm able to recover almost instantly. Yeah. And especially on set, um, we filmed Station 6 episode 1 in three days. I don't recommend that. Um, but like in between filming, I had to go back and find all these, or find the parts that I had already printed because I knew it was going to happen. And I was able to get these back and ready to go for the next uh, shooting day three hours later so it, it, was, wow. it was but it was great because i can recover quickly and cheaply that's awesome yeah so what's next for this project uh so we just got done funding episode two episode two um, we're hoping to film this summer uh and we're just going to continue to follow the story of oscar barrett which oscar barrett is the name of the the baby from ghostbusters 2. Wow. this story is about him and just his life as a ghostbuster 20 something years later so. Yeah, That's episode cool. two, coming soon. Very cool. So thank you so much for coming out and visiting us. Um, we do have lots of links um, down below if you want to check out Chris's work. Anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no, just stay tuned. Uh, we're gonna. I'm actually doing a 3D print video to explain about some of the behind the scenes of what it took to make these, and hopefully it can help you. But it, contact Matter Hackers. They have the answers. Um, but yeah, check us out, Ghostbusters Station 6. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. I'm Mara, and this has been your Matter Hackers Minute. Go be awesome. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.